What's up guys? Happy Monday. JC, Ron Strong. If you guys were watching my channel yesterday, you guys heard the news about Chino Antrax, his sister, and uh, his brother-in-law. There's been a lot of questions asked. There's been a lot of debate. There's been a lot of he said, she said, pointing fingers and you know, uh, what he did and what he didn't do. Um, let's get into this video. Cartel got me working for the big faces. Federally got my car full of brick cases. Hit the pin with a grin, there ain't no faking. I was picked to my back for my shoelaces. Got out, should have seen the look on they faces. All jealous cause your boy stacking hella paper. Set up by the crew, they done put a banger in the trunk of my car and left me to hang there. No thing, then attorney went and beat the case. Got a job digging holes for minimum wage. Had a dream that Cato said he proud of me. Stay here, don't leave, keep doing your thing. Quit the drugs, but you know I went back to selling. Six time failing, I went back to prison. Got my head right, got my bread right. Push these weights like a kilo in a tailpipe. Trying to do right, I got a mission. Trying to give back to my boys in the prison. The old me's gone, I ain't never gonna miss them. From wrong to strong, stay true to the vision. From wrong to, to strong, from wrong to strong. From wrong to, to strong From wrong to strong Hey, what's up? JC was wrong strong If you haven't subscribed to my channel, make sure you subscribe Hit that like button, hit the bell so you don't miss nothing If you're part of my crew, mi familia, la raza, what's up? So once I lost a Bourbon, as you can tell, I'm a little, you know, I'm getting a lot of uh, messages about, uh, you know, he was a rat, he was this, he was that, um, he deserved it. Um, at the end of the day, man, and this, and this is the way that I am, at the end of the day, no one, no one deserves to be hurt. Uh, killed and then especially their family members also you know he he, uh, he left uh, some daughters behind and um, you know it's just it's sad it's sad because this is why I, I, I say what I say on my channel and, and everything is that um, there's, there's a lot of questions you know a lot of questions you know what really happened could it be that you know they threatened him of hurting his family so he went to Mexico and there's also another speculation where they uh, the Chapito sent a team to go pick him up from the halfway house and took him but then again why would the house in Mexico be full of bullets because I seen the videos I seen the videos and like you know I put on my last video um, I have people that live out that way and uh, you know, the house is shot up pretty good. Pretty good. They tore the house up. Garage and all. Everything. They tore it up. High caliber rifles. You know, um... So there's, there's so many questions, you know. There's also the question of... Uh... Did the DEA... You know, set them up for it. You know, to find El Mayo. Um... It's, it's crazy because... We'll never know. We'll never know, you know. That they, they, there's 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 also a lot of like uh, you know people from Sinaloa that message me and that Sinaloa doesn't like snitches. The 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 old man didn't trust him. Chino, Ch you know Chino. There's a, tw a twenty million Chinos to replace him, and that's true because in, in that line of work, you're 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 replaceable. It's easy. Uh, just like they replaced me when I went to prison. Uh, they found a new guy to take care of business and everything, and business kept going because business needs to keep running in order for those you know organizations to stay in stay in and business the chapitos put some stuff up you know on social media and stuff like that because that's how it is nowadays uh social media is everything that they're saying that the chapitos did it because they've been wanting control and they're they were afraid that he was going to put together a crew and he was going to, you know, do something. 
or what I was thinking also because I was gonna drop the video actually uh, on Monday and I had to switch everything up because of what happened I dropped that one yesterday but you know when you go to prison and especially when you're in max custody uh, it changes you it changes you and you lose your edge you know Maybe he, he thought he, he was still Chino when he came back from Max. And you and I know the people that have done, you know, high security custody time, it changes you. And, you know, people are not the same. Wars are not the same. Everything changes on the outside. You're the only one that's, you know, frozen in time. Everybody else is, is changing. Um, I mean, it was only, what, 10 days? I think it was 10 days since he left the uh, halfway house in the U.S. Um, after, you know, he had to do, um, he had five years of probation. Uh, but it doesn't make sense either because he wasn't an American citizen. And I've done Fed time. I know what they do to uh, Mexican nationals that finish their bid. You know, they turn them, they drive them straight to the border and right there they drop them off. Um, and then 10, 10 days later, yeah, he's, he's, I mean... There were, there were like, a, a newspaper after newspaper, uh, and one that said neighbors reported like a strong confrontation at the address where Chino was, you know, picked up with his sister and his brother-in-law. And I seen the video, the house was like gunned up. It was like crazy. Like they used high caliber weapons, um, you know, and um, he hadn't been home since 2013 when he was uh, captured in Amsterdam. So it had been a minute. So that's that's what I mean. Is like when when I moved out here to Phoenix, right? You lose your edge. You lose your edge of being because my time was very very different when I was working with the family that I was working with. I it was very very different because there wasn't all out war like there is now. Like I I see some of the stuff that these guys are doing. Um, when they capture like enemy cartel members and stuff like that, it is like it's gruesome. It, it is bad. Like it is like the work of like really bad evil people because like they're 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 doing some bad stuff. And my my war zone was more in Chicago because I was involved with the gang. So my war zone was over there. That's where I was like constantly in like shootouts and fights and collecting money and and all that stuff that was my war zone over there now did i get into a couple of uh, altercations and things like that in mexico with the army and stuff like that yeah i did in, in my in my time but it wasn't as as bad as it is and as evil as it is today now so what i'm getting to is that when i moved out here to phoenix and i stopped having to check my shoulder, my back, and, and, and just always be on, on that fight and flight mode, I, I lost my edge. And I'll never forget the day that I went, I went back on, I had been gone for, uh, I think, five years. And I got a phone call from uh, the uh, person that used to manage uh, that uh, rap group, uh, Do or Die. And they wanted me to fly into Chicago to... Uh, be head of their security and I, I agreed because the money was good house was good i was a little scared because i knew that you know a lot of people were still looking for me in chicago because of my whole gang situation and all that stuff but it was worth the risk just because of the money i had a newborn daughter so i said you know screw it i'll go you know i'll, um, I'll make some money and, and come back so i ended up flying to chicago right and i still had my my really big crown on my neck tattooed it wasn't covered up like it is now but i had it huge on my neck and this is how i know i lost the edge i pulled into a random gas station you don't do that in chicago you can't just go to any neighborhood especially if you're part of a neighborhood you can't just stop at any random gas station or store and walk in and think that everything is cool no that's how guys get smoked over there and i i stopped at the gas station i put gas and all of a sudden, I didn't even know, I was on the north side, it was unknown hood, uh, unknowns, um, they ran up on me, and they were like, what you be about? And I was like, it caught me off guard, because I wasn't used to it no more, I, w I didn't have that Chicago, you know, flavor, so I saw it, so it caught me off guard, and um, 
I was lucky enough that I had a hoodie on with a, with a jacket. I pulled out my Arizona driver's license and I was like, dude, I ain't even from here, man. I'm from Arizona. And he looked at it. He had a gun on his, in his hand. He looked at it. He's like, all right. He's like, be, be safe, you know? And I was like, I jumped in my car and I was like, they, they would have smoked me. I, I would have been, been gone. And that's, that's the thing is that that's what I think also could have happened to Chino is that he lost his edge. He lost, you know, because this dude was trained by Israeli, like, soldiers. Like, he was trained by top-notch people, you know. And you, you, it doesn't matter. Like, once you're gone and you lose your edge and you're not doing it every day, it's like working out. You don't work out for a couple months. Guess what? Your muscle starts to fade away. You're, you're not strong enough no more. And everything changes. Everything changes, man. So... You know, all I can say, man, my condolences to his family. Um, I've said it in the past. Uh, Chino was actually one of the uh, top lieutenants in the cartels that I used to follow as, you know, I was younger and doing time and stuff like that. Just because of his uh, upbringing and, and his past, you know, um, there's a different story to his his, uh, he know his past, how he was like involved with like some street gangs over there and stuff like that. And he was, he was a hustler and, and, you know, um, I know it sounds bad, but it's almost like the rags to riches story, you know what I mean? But this is what I mean about my whole channel is that you, you have to take, it's like we're always saying, I lost this, I lost that. Like when I went to prison for all those years, I used to always say, oh, I lost all my years in there. I lost, I lost, you know, my family, I, my kids. I didn't see my daughters grow up. I lost this, I lost that, I lost my homies. We say we lost, 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 but we actually never reflect on what we gained from the situation. And my biggest gain was that I learned from my errors and I learned from that lifestyle that if I work hard enough doing what I do now with my fitness, my company, my books, and all that stuff, I, I could be successful also. I might not be as rich, but I also don't have to watch my back. I don't have to get worried about being, you know, uh, kidnapped, robbed, killed, picked up by the feds, uh, all those things that came with that. And, you know, um, I, I work my ass off. I work my ass off, and I learned that from that lifestyle. I learned that from that lifestyle of getting up, you know, suited and booted pretty much all the time. And, you know, there's 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 a lot more that's going on over there in, in Mexico, you know, uh, with all these cartels that are like springing up. And, you know, right now, a very, very powerful one is La Nueva Generación that they they're they're taking care of business. And those dudes are not playing around. They are suited and booted 110 percent. And they are, they got some, some warriors and some straight lieutenants, generales, like they, they, they're, they're not messing around. They are not messing around. And I'm actually going to drop a video on one of their, uh, main dudes that was with them. And then, um, he, uh, went with another, with another organization, but these dudes are, are not playing, man. And like I said, this is a whole different time, a whole different era with, you know, social media and then posting videos about the tortures and stuff like that. It's, it's a whole different game, man. And, you know, it's sad to see so many people losing their life over money, power, and greed that, you know, it uh, it's very, very sad. And it's one of my biggest things why I... I make my videos and I, I inform people on this stuff because to me it's entertainment and education and for you to see where you don't want to end up because uh you know just think about it even though I wasn't in the I wasn't in the cartel at this moment at this time and era like I would have probably only lasted about five six years yeah I did 17 years but uh, you, you see the, the difference is that I'm still alive. I made it out and you know Life is getting better. It's getting better for me and You know, um, I just want to say uh, You know rest in peace to Chino Antrax, uh, if he is Is in a better place and resting now. I, I hope that you know He's resting and you know, they there was they used to say soy Antrax, me voy Antrax, you know, and at the end of the day 
Culiacan, Sinaloa was his home. I'm pretty sure he would rather have died and been buried at home than in the U.S. So, you know, this is just my, um, my goodbye video to him and actually telling people that it's what I stress every day in all my videos, that that lifestyle doesn't, doesn't end up nowhere but, you know, in the ground or in prison for life. And even when you do go to the prison and you do cooperate and you get out, you know, you might be in the ground too also, you know. Um, the feds can promise you all this protection and everything. At the end of the day, if they want to find you, they're going to find you. And that's the thing is that just stick to, to living hard, man. And life is easy. Like I tell everybody in my videos, you only have one life to live. But if you live it right, life can be pretty good, man. And that's coming from me that I just barely started living life at 43. My name's JC. I am Ron Strong. Don't judge nobody. Give somebody a hug. Stay in your lane. Live savage. And remember.